What's up guys? My name is Danny. I draw cars. I turn them into 3D prints using Hueforge. I also do a bunch of other stuff with Hueforge, but that's kind of the gist of it. I did a presentation over on Polymakers Discord this past Friday at 7 p.m. CST just to kind of give a visualization on what Hueforge is doing in the background whenever you're trying to create a project using the software. Um, the video, when I was recording it, it also recorded the desktop audio, so it kind of sounds like I have an echo. I've fixed that for future videos, um, but it's you know, it's kind of annoying, but I'm sorry about that. But um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I also do these presentations live, like I said, so you can come and join and then I will answer your questions live. But I hope this video helps you in some way, shape or form while you're doing Hueforge. Hope to see you in the next one. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends, maybe people that are struggling with Hueforge, and I will see you in the next one. What's up guys? My name is Danny. I draw cars. I turn them into 3D prints. So we're going to talk about how we use Hueforge to turn our drawings into 3D prints like this one. Um, so, with that being said, this is the drawing that that Hueforge is based off of. Today, I'm just going to talk about like how Hueforge is looking at your images to kind of give you a better understanding of what you need to do to your images in order to get beautiful Hueforges such as those. So. Whenever you're doing a standard Hue Forge, this is kind of how Hue Forge is looking at it. It's looking at the luminance value, or it's looking at your picture with like a black and white filter on it. So basically, it's going to take your 2D image, and it's going to turn that into a 3D mesh based on where your darkest areas are and your lightest areas are. It's kind of like a lithophane maker if you've ever used one of those. So in this case... You can see just this is exactly how Hue Forge is going to look at your image for standard mode and how it will generate the mesh um, using this image. Now let's talk about color pop. Okay, so this image, this is the, how I want the actual Hue Forge to look um, with these, with the car and the boat in the background. So the problem with using standard mode for this is you won't get the color separation that you want. Um, just because of the way Hue Forge is making the mesh, right? So the mode color pop was added to the program so that it will actually look for not only the, the luminance, the black and white area, which in this case would be the boat, it's also looking for, um, it's also going to look for the color. And then we'll actually create two hue forges based on that. So it's going to look at this image and it will see, hey, this is, you know, colorful. And then it will also look at, it'll look at the boat and be like, okay, this is black and white. And then what it's going to do is it's actually going to stack the colorful part of the image on top of the black and white part of the image. And that will give you two hue forges stacked on top of each other. That's what we mean. And whenever you have two hue forges stacked on each other, you don't have to. This isn't a, a image, you know, copier. You know, hue forge is designed in a way that you can really. It's just going to take the luminance value and the colors, and then you can really add whatever whatever filaments you have in your library to um, your hue forges. So. Just because Hue Forge is looking at it and it says, hey, this is black and white, and hey, this is color, it doesn't mean that I have to keep this, this boat as a black and white. You know, the, this can be whatever color I want. It's just a way for Hue Forge to, to see the separation and to kind of give you the results that, that in our heads we're thinking that we want, right? Because otherwise you wouldn't get the, the separation like I'm talking about. So, um, like for the for this particular color pop that I did, you can find it on Maker World in such a way that you can actually change the color of the car to whatever color you want based on what filaments you have in your library. So it doesn't have to be a purple car. It can be, you know, whatever color car you want it to be. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, now, I also drew this car recently. I say recently, like in the last month, I think. Um, and the reason that it looks kind of janky is because we also have color aware. So color aware is a little bit different than color pop. So like I said, standard is your standard hue forge. That's your that's one hue forge. Then you have color pop. What color pop's doing? It's looking at that black and white, and then it's looking at that color, and then it's going to stack those two together and make two hue forges. 
Color aware is going to look at your red color space, your green color space, and your blue color space. And then it will actually make three separate hue forges and stack those together. Um, this is so you can get a little bit more accurate color separation in general. It's a little bit more complicated. It's a lot more complicated than color pop for standard mode um, to use. But once you understand what it's what hue forge is looking for, it gives you a better idea of how you need to edit your photos to actually get the, the intended results. So like I said, Hue Forge is not an image recreator in the sense of you put this image into Hue Forge and it's gonna give you this exact output in the same colors in filament. Okay, so you get to use whatever color filaments you want. It's just creating the mesh based on the RGB or whatever, um, you know, whatever the highest and most luminous value of your image. So when you are dividing this image up in your head and you're trying to use color aware, we like to use the, the reference that like you have a blue bucket, you have a green bucket, and then you have a red bucket. Okay. So this is how Hue Forge is looking at it. You've got three different buckets. Now, like I said in the color pop, you do not have to use, I can't stress it enough, you do not have to use the same color filament as what you're seeing here. When I say we're using buckets, all you have to do is you have your base color black. Most standard Hue Forges, you start with a black. And then you can use whatever colors you want. So if we wanted this car to be pink, theoretically, we could use pink. We could use some red in there. And then for the top layer, I'm just going to use gray, but imagine this is white because I'm using a white background. We could use white. Okay, so that, that makes your first hue forge. Now we work on the green color space. Like before, we have to rebase. So we would start with your black filament. You can move on to a yellow color. And then we'll say like a brighter yellow color. And then at the top, we use gray again just to show off white. So I'll show a little bit of this in Hue Forge just to kind of to make you understand exactly what I'm going on about. But it's dividing up your image into RGB. And then you can create those three Hue Forges and it will stack them together. So these three modes that we've been talking about, Color Aware, Color Pop, and Standard, those Hue Forge is literally making the mesh for you. It's making the 3D mesh for you based on the luminous values or the RGB values, okay? Color match is a little bit more complicated. A lot of people did want an image recreator, so, so you'll be able to have more control over the mesh and the heights of your mesh based on what colors are in your images. Like I was talking about with the buckets, you can see on the side of Hue Forge, on the side of the color core, you've got um, you know your blue bucket, your red bucket, your green bucket. And down here in CA presets, you can actually change the order of these buckets. So we can see that the, the car is in the front. So you would want it to be on the top. That way, when you print it, it feels like the, the jellyfish and the manta rays are in the background of this image. Um, and then you also have like red, green, blue, red, blue, green, and red, blue. So those are all for if your image doesn't have a particular color. Like if it's just a blue and green image, that way it compresses the red color space so there's just no red bucket so like i said it's three hue forges stacked on top of each other um it's just looking at particular color spaces and you're just trying to fill those buckets up and make those hue forges within these color spaces so you can use different ca presets like for this particular image that car is in the foreground right and then the manta ray and the jellyfish are in the background so when you change it to the second option, blue is the topmost bucket so that when you print it, it literally feels like, you know, your blue car is in the foreground and then everything else is in the background. Um, the other CA presets, you've got like red, green. Um, it's compressing that blue color space so that now Hue Forge is only looking at your red and green color space when you're creating your Hue Forge. So yeah, so there's different CA presets. And I just kind of wanted to show off to everybody what the what Hue Forge is looking for in the background, just to kind of give a better understanding and a little bit of visualization um, as to you know what 
what you need to have in the back of your mind while you're creating a hue forge. Because like I said, it's not an image recreator. Not yet anyways. Um, it's just to, it gives you an artistic touch to where you can use whatever color filaments you want and uh, bring those in and, you know, make make really cool projects. A lot of people, when they first get into Hue Forge, they think, oh man, I have this really cool image and it's super complicated. There's a hundred different colors and they're like, I'm gonna 3D print this and it's just impossible. Um, just because of the way you do Hue Forge and it's swap by layer using, you know, your filaments to blend different colors based on their opacities and their transmission distance. So it, it's kind of like we have to bring them back to reality and be like, okay, we need to simplify this image. What colors are most important to you, et cetera. Um, and that way we can kind of help create that mesh.